the third webinar that we are going to talk about environmental topics uh, linked to the journalism. I'm not quite sure how many of you have some kind of uh, journalistic experience, but in either way, I um, assume that uh, would might be quite interesting for you and very useful in the future in the way of how you are communicating, uh, how, you are, how uh, are you addressing your messages, how you are talking to the people and how you are, uh, of course, uh, mainly uh, in the future linked to, to your work. Uh, as you know, the topic is environmental journalism. We'll start with uh, something that is really a strange era, you know, 21st century. We have a lot of good because of that, but of course, a lot of problems that are caused by new technologies. It's um, vice versa situation and communication, we have a lot of um, uh, possibility for, for prosperity, for mutual communication, for 24 hours communication, long distance. We are at the moment uh, going online, which is on one hand strange, you know, it's different when you're in a classroom, so you have um, much more interactivities and uh, you can uh, follow the students with uh, your eyes and you can see some kind of feedback when you when you are talking so trying not to be uh, bored or whatever because i don't know if you are aware according to some statistics when someone is talking um all, already almost 20 percentage of the people who are involved in that gathering or listening are not thinking uh, or not listening what uh, that someone, in this case me, is talking. Um, everyone can be occupied with their own problems or wishes or willings or some plans for tonight with um, their loved one, with the family, with the boyfriend, with the girlfriend and etc. But uh, I mean, that's it. We have now this um, on the other hand, it's really great. Um, pleasure and opportunity to be able to talk like this uh, online and to you to have you 50 40 people following from different parts of the region or the world so as i mentioned at the beginning these 21st centuries give us a lot of opportunities but as well there is a lot of traps that might um, be huge challenges in the future one of that um, trap, I would say, or challenge is uh, how the environment is going to develop, what kind of uh, environment we are going to, to live in, and what we can do to improve that, especially if we are journalists working in a journalism and uh, doing some stories that might help uh, the people who are not involved in the issue to understand the problems, and um, to get the right message, uh, not only to understand that the problem exists, but to, to go in direction to help uh, on some kind uh, um, with whatever they are doing, that problem to be somehow solved. Um, so we are going to talk about basic stuff of journalism today. As I said at the beginning, I'm not familiar how many of you are deeply involved with this issue. Um, maybe a lot, maybe none, but on the other hand, I think might be useful uh, for everyone at the end of the day, because um, uh, everyone of us, not only journalists, the people, uh, they are on a way um, journalists today. A few days ago, I was reading uh, that the German concern uh, built and uh, developed um, no, if I'm not wrong about developed, I think it was built for sure, or not quite sure if it's developed or Spiegel at the moment. But anyway, they were predicting they are going, to, of course, um, to deploy a lot of uh, media workers, not only journalists, but in general, different type of workers. And uh, they are going to, um, they, they are saying that the artificial intelligence is going to uh, overtake the journalistic work and that they will be better journalists than the, the, the journalists that exist at the moment. So we'll see. We are not sure how the things are going on and what the future is uh, going to bring us to in this regard. 
So we are now going back in the past, starting what it what is um, basic basic in journalism, and basic basic in journalism is news, something that would be your uh, homework. You have to write uh, first news and then sto a story based on the same information, same facts, but of course uh, extended. And um, news, you know, it's um, it's supposed to be that is something interesting, something new. The world is telling us to be something really new, to be something that is very attractive. Um, we have to be um, good in uh, uh, to discover or to to recognize what uh, kind of information, what kind of news is valuable for the people outside of our institution work, etc. So what kind of uh, um, news the people wanted to hear, they wanted what kind of value the news has for them. Uh, having this in mind, in journalism, we often say that there is not a news, maybe you know that, um, that is not, not news um, uh, if dog um, bite a man. Is it a news? I'm sorry that I cannot have your answers immediately in, in uh, life. But no, it's not news, especially not in Macedonia these days, I can tell you that, because we have a lot of that kind of events uh, on a daily basis. A lot of dogs that going circulating around, and every day someone is bite from some dog. But what would be news in this regard? Hmm? What would be news in this regard? In this regard, a news would be if men bite the dog. Vice versa. Someone uh, recently told me when men will kill the dog. No, no. When men men buy the dog, that's something that is um, unusual, that is attractive, that is interesting for the public audience. So we have to be aware that we have to estimate. Someone asked on chit chat, what is that? What is interesting? How much supposed to be interesting? It's supposed to be interesting for the wider public. And uh, secondly, we have to be aware, if we are working as a journalist, uh, to whom we are addressing that. Uh, are we addressing to in, uh, only in, for the people in Skopje? I mean, in local stuff, or it's regional, or it's international. That's different issue, because it's not the news always. What is new for me as a citizen of Skopje, for someone who lives in France, or lives in United States of America, or etc. So we have um, to have that on mind as well. On one hand, we we are uh, trying uh, to value what is the news, uh, as we said, new, interesting, attractive, etc. On the other hand, that news to whom is interesting for the uh, local staff or for wider audience. That is as well very very important because. In this uh, regard, we are building the news and we are presenting in the media and choosing what kind of media outlet will use for some kind of news. I'm not quite sure if you understand everything. I mean, I try to be precise, uh, but uh, if something is not clear, please do not hesitate to ask, to write, and afterwards, when I finish my presentation, we'll um, speak with Dar to have half an hour uh, like debate or you can ask questions because it's um, that for me better way of communication if we have you know two way of uh, communication instead of only me talking 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 endlessly okay and then we are going uh, to to just a sec uh, that uh, we have to be uh, aware about some facts when we are talking about journalists and journalism, especially linked to what we are talking today, environmental journalism. Because the channels, you know, the journalists and the media, they are the channels to amplify other voices, the voices of citizens, of public officials that are important in solving some issue, corporate institutions as well, 
uh, not to mention how, how important they are and how supportive they might be, spokespersons, academics, and, uh, and so on and so forth. The more we have, the merrier it is, as they are saying, but the, uh, the more we are involved in the story, uh, the more uh, um, greater possibility we have to find some solution and um, to, uh, to help us to build the story on the right way and to help us to have some good outcome of the end of, of that story. Because it's not just something that should be published, that in Skopje AI is very polluted. It is polluted for decades. Uh, but uh, how to find solution to that pollution? That's the issue, you know. That's why the journalists are, are writing, they're demanding, they're educating. All that is their uh, part of their of their job. So um, uh, we uh, we are, as we said, seeking to influence public attitudes and decisions about environmental matters. And the more we are. Um, uh, seeking, the more we are devoted, uh, devoted and digging, digging um, what is the truth and what is not the truth, what is fact and what is misleading, because this is very important, especially these days when we uh, have uh, all these issues, as someone mentioned, global warming, but what all, all sorts of um, global polluting the country on different levels, either in the oceans, either global warming, either we have some problems with um, uh, heating, uh, lack of energy, problems, as you know, there is war, global problems, political, economical. So all we, uh, on some uh, on some way, we are suffering of this, everything that is happening in the world on a global scene at the moment. So we are trying to dig the right and to address the right uh, issue uh, due to, as again, I will say, be able to find some kind of solution. Is that always possible? Of course not. We are all aware about that. So it sometimes might be very idealistic, uh, idealistic uh, to, to, to be what I'm talking about, but that's the journalistic job, you know. It's the job to, to be persuasive, to be persistent, to be consistent, to not to give up at once and to, to go, but to, to work and work and work on behalf of what the people think is interesting for them and the people think what is valuable for them. And I think, uh, speaking again about uh, today's issue about environmental, that the people are pretty much aware about the problems that and the changing of climate and changing of environment is uh, is really serious, serious issue and serious problems that should be addressed and should be trying to find some kind of solutions, at least on a, sh if not possible, short term, but on mid and, and long term on a behalf of and for the good of all of us. Um, as you know, uh, we need the press, we need the journalism because that's um, part of any healthy, we'll say, democracy or any developed democracy or any democracy today. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, journalism is transforming due to the technological transformations in the society. Uh, if you remember, first time in, when it was 16th think, century, maybe I'm... <laughs> I know it was 1960 somewhere, end of 16th, beginning of 17th century, when the Gutenberg uh, first um, uh, discovered uh, these letters from huh, what would be on English, uh, all of a plump, I think. And there, uh, you know, the developments are huge. Uh, as the technological developments is going on, the society, had, going in different directions and um, the democracy is growing but on the other hand this new technology as i said impose new ways of um, uh, of uh, media and journalism so we have first print media then which is today we call traditional media print media radio 
the voice was the dominating. Everyone on the, during Second World War was listening to the BBC, and that was, you know, the law above all laws. And then we have the television, the magical box. You are young, you don't remember, but I remember in my building, where I live, when first time we bought a television and in the whole building only few television exist, the people were going around and uh, checking if someone is inside. They couldn't believe how it's functioning, how it's working, who is speaking to us, who is talking. And today we are talking online with all world 24 hours uh, per day, which is uh, a huge technological development. And no one actually is quite sure where this technological development is lead, either with journalism, either with environment. So uh, we all have to be on standby, I would say, because the changes is ahead of us. Um, and um, we all uh, learn how to function quickly, how to um, answer quickly before, if you send a mail, if you're not in journalism involved, I was deeply involved in journalism in, I was working for AFP long, uh, um, more than two decades. And it's agents, you know, you have to be in a, uh, in a second, uh, on online to, to be on a place to send the news at, as soon as possible. But now we are, we are challenging different challenges and um, we are facing how when we have all these possibilities of different uh, types of uh, multitasking and uh, multi, uh, how to say, not only multitasking, but multi, multi playing video, written words, oral, whatever, we have to, to adjust it to all that. So we live in different world, you know, a few days ago, I have some friends here at home and they came. They haven't been since I don't know when with this pandemic and Corona and etc. Maybe three years we haven't seen each other in life, just on phone. And I was saying, ah, oh, great that you come. What kind of coffee would you like to drink? No one was answering. Three of them sitting here. Everyone was staring into the phone and writing something. I asked second time. Sorry, company, nice to have you here. What what kind of coffee would you like to drink? Again, okay, or tea or whatsoever. <laughs> Again, no one was answering. Everyone was. Then what I've done, I wrote a message to them uh, separately. Hello, Liliana, would you like coffee or tea? Hello, Susanna, would you like? And they suddenly all, are you crazy? Are you normal? But of course I'm normal. Are you, you normal? You came here to see each other, to see me, to see why you're staring into phone. But that's what this new technological stuff is doing to us. They are changing our daily lives and they are changing our future and they are changing the environment and journal journalism as well. So we have always to have that on mind. Um, when we are talking about journalism, we have to, to distinguish one thing that is what is environmental journalism and what is environmental news? I put in, um, uh, as you can see, in yellow, bold, bold yellow, everything that I was thinking might be more uh, put in focus today to be easier to follow up. Because in a, uh, environmental journalism, which means we have to research, we have to verify, we have to check, fact checking, you probably learn about that. We have to produce or broadcast uh, to um, with aim to achieve the uh, the interest of public uh, public audience, uh, and then the role of environmental journalism is uh, in communication about the environment. Of course, uh, it's not for politics. If the worlds are saying what it is supposed to be said, but when we are talking about them. Um, uh, environmental news, then uh, this is, you know, in a different level because uh, then we might be um, interested of the ex environmental news on a very uh, strange, uh, even explosive matter, information about the environment uh, that uh, 
cause some problems or might cause some problems. That's everything news to me and I accept that as a news. So this might lead to eyewitness. So when we are on a scene and something is happening or when we wanted to, to bring some uh, better position for some environment problem, so we are advocate, uh, advocating that or anti um, pro or anti etc. So uh, that is the main uh, differences between these two terms uh, that might be useful just to be aware about. And uh, just a few words about the history of environmental journalism. I will not talk much about that because you can read that if you are interested more about that in the uh, uh, literature we are we given to you. Uh, so uh, it starts somehow in 1960s that um, the media began to inform about env environmental problems M more and more and uh, effectively and um, persistently day by, by day something happened oil spill in the Atlantic um, some birds were ruined some fish were ruined in some our rivers and etc so uh, since 1960s in a constantly we have some information or articles linked to problems that are um, bypassed with environmental crisis uh, during the next decade, environmental news would periodically expand and grow. That's unpredictable predicti prediction pattern, uh, as we all know, as we mentioned, because we are. Uh, I, uh, sorry, because I have one question. I know environmental journalists are only dedicated to to what? Hmm? Who is asking? Dedicated to what? It's not completely clear the question. We have to know they are dedicated if they are working. Not, you know, there is journalists who are really dedicated and devoted. And of course, there is journalists who are not. We cannot. Um, OK, I think that I understand what you want to ask. And as I said, we will have a chit chat at the end of the presentation, but um, Yes, there are some journalists who are really uh, willing to improve the situation with environmental uh, ch uh, changes and challenges. And of course, always in all fields exist journalists who are not working professionally and they are linked to some um, business, political on, or environmental issues, interests. That's my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think it's like that. It's you cannot avoid that. I think nowhere in the world, especially not in this region in this moment. And uh, by the. Uh, <laughs> you have both. Uh, someone asked, I, you probably read if they are employed by the mass, mass media or they work freelance. I think there is some. Uh, both uh, you have uh, freelance and you have who are working for mainstream even media and of course a lot of them are working for social or online media because they are all different as you know uh, uh, what is news for media i assume that you know but let's um let's um check our knowledge or repeat it not uh, harm of that uh, as we said, news is supposed to be something attractive, interesting, <coughs> pardon, and to have some content, to have some some um, some color, to be interested in that way, not to be grave um, or white, or if you know what I mean. It's very important all information to be time um, uh, given on time, because if you uh, write a story that is happened something two years ago who cares about that we have so many events uh, and so many changings and uh, so huge dynamic on a, a daily basis that really who cares what happened yesterday not two years ago if some uh, environmental issue is interested it's supposed to be either 
that happened now either happened in the past, but the consequences are still huge and present. Then we are taking care about that issue as well. They have to be, as we mentioned maybe previously, relevant for public, not relevant for us. As a media, as a media outlet, we are the bridge, the channels between the subjects and the people. And we have to be able to estimate what is the right and worthy information for the public. Because everyone in any institution will say we work super, we are the best, we are doing our, um, we are making great effort. But the people wanted to know what is the result of that effort, not what they are doing. They are paid for that. What is the result? What they are, what the people have from their work. So that's why we say relevant for public. Then we have story that increased human interest. When you always have some um, human being, people, children, old people, in the middle of the story, the interest is huge. If someone suffer from pollution, the if someone um, tell the story, instead of you retelling him, but he directly speak in camera or to you and you read write that, then the story has much more relevance. It's much more interesting. And it's, of course, um, uh, um, provoking empathy among people. We have to be careful with that kind of stories. We don't want pity and um, pathetic, but we want empathy and sympathy. And that's different. So we have to be to try to be very balanced when we are telling stories like that. Of course, the media are always interested in drama and confrontation, in something that is uh, moral or something um, unusual is happening, then of course everyone is interested in, and uh, um, as well as the famous faces. It's uh, always good if you have on some event, if you have to Mm, if you engage some famous uh, person to speak about environmental problems, it will be like, you know, catchy stuff, like um, warm for the fish. You will have a much more huge uh, attention from the public if you have someone who is prominent, who is famous, who is likable, you know. People want you to hear what he has or she has to say. Um, then uh, the media wanted to be something unique, something that is happened uh, rarely, not uh, on daily basis, and to be accurate. We have to be aware about this. It's uh, last but not the least. Um, accurate uh, accuracy is very important, especially these days when we have all these uh, different kinds of media. If we don't have accuracy, we we'll, we'll lie about something or mismanipulate it or manipulate it or whatsoever, with intention or without, um, it would be bad for us. Because people find their ways to, to learn and to hear the truth. And um, they they wouldn't trust you tomorrow. And uh, that uh, once you, you lost uh, your trust, uh, it's very, very difficult to, to get them back on your track. So be aware about uh, this, um, what is news for, for the media and what is good for, for the media and what is good for the, for the people at the end. That that's is the most valuable thing. I assume that we already talk about these questions. We'll talk about them today as well a bit of more. Maybe I will be boring to you if you already know that, but I always think it's very important to understand how they're functioning and why they're important. As you know, 5W, uh, 1H, uh, who, who is the subject of the story, what is about, me means whom, from whom, why is happening, with whom is happening. And um, I'm saying like, you know, if uh, today we were in a classroom, and um, we all were together, 
in the Institute of Communication Studies in Skopje. Of course, no one is interested from outside about our work. But if someone like, let's say, I don't know, tennis, uh, tennis uh, Djokovic came to visit us, that would be news. Uh, or so it's very important to be aware and to have in mind when you are writing news items because uh, with me that's your task to um, estimate which one of these questions is giving us the most interesting answer that is going to be put on a first place we'll see later how it uh, that structure should be so who if someone is very famous and is then he is in the middle of the title headlines and the lead. If it is about what is happening, what is about, what is the theme of the subject? Is that very, very relevant for the public audience? Then we are starting with answering of that question of what. When is OK, it's important when something is happening because we, re we said it's very important to be everything on time. It's um, um, it's useless if we have the best news, best package of news and message if it's timeless. I mean, um, it's not on time, then it's then it's useless. So um, where is happening sometimes is very important. If we wanted to announce something that is going to happen, people would like to know where is happening and why and how usually uh, they are coming at the end or in the background. Usually I said it's not uh, the rule, but it's mainly like that because uh, it's uh, difficult to explain or you cannot in the first glance in the news. You cannot always explain why something happened or how something happened. They need sometimes you need time about that. Usually it's linked to accidents, you know, plane crash. You cannot say why it's crashed I and mean, you need to have investigation, but you 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 can say when, where, and and uh, uh, how that uh, happened. So uh, depend on what you are going to tell to the public, and that is the same relevance when you are talking about environmental issues, because in, uh, it's the same relevance. So the climate is changing, changing obviously. We don't see snow this year in Skopje, and we have when I was young. Two meters of snow. We was we was going with uh, Sanki. What was lace? I think it's slides. How it's on English? We were going all around the city. You know, it was to, for days of, like full of snow. Now there is no snow for years. So it's um, uh, what is? I wouldn't agree. Journalist job or goal should ever be two. What is the continuance of that? To do what? Hmm? Someone writes something, but not clearly. Uh, to do what? With what? Wh what? What it is about? So uh, these uh, five um, W and one H is who was involved, what happened, where did it happen? Why did it happen? This is simplified simplifies way. When did it happen and how did it happen? And uh, when we write, we have to be very, very sure. Kiss. We have to use this kiss, kiss, kiss. Keep um, short and uh, simple. That's the best way to, to write clearly, to write precisely. We have to be aware uh, to have an information that are very valuable for audience. I will repeat that because otherwise they will not um, be interested or trust to uh, trustfully oriented towards us. Um, this is the first thing and then we are choosing which uh, so we have to have what to write and then we are choosing which kind of uh, journalistic genre we are using. In this case, we are talking only about news and um, about news and storytelling. But there are, of course, as you know, a lot of different uh, journalistic genres that are quite interesting, like a reportage, like interview, like articles and etc. that um, that might be used and uh, to attract the public audience. 
usually when we write, we think what is our aim, what we wanted to achieve or we wanted to achieve, we wanted only to inform maybe. We don't have some secret agenda. <laughs> we wanted just to give to the people facts, to, um, to tell them what it's about, what's going on, they're curious, something is happening here or there. Then uh, why the news uh, story should be announced, published at that exact moment. Why is important to be published or present or broadcast on uh, on that very moment? And um, uh, uh, to whom we are speaking to, we have to be aware about to whom we are speaking to. Uh, what is our goal, what kind of effect we like to achieve. Because when we spe specifically writing for um, environmental um, topics, we wanted to achieve something. At the end, we wanted to have some reaction, either of public, either of institutions. We wanted to uh, preserve or to build something in the future. Uh, and, uh, and uh, that's it. Some are writing, yeah, some uh, are coming by a bit of delay of the uh, of this um, writing on chat, maybe not empathy, but to provoke um, sympathy. Yes, but you know, sympathy, empathy, but not to create on a way to be too much, um, how to explain on English, not to be understand wrongly. When we are writing, we have to give the facts, we have to um, uh, we have to have some um, uh, inform good information. Yeah, some are right. It's not. It's not ethical. It's not ethical if you provoke too many. If you use them, then it's that's it's not ethical. If you use them for their U.S. story and to provoke a pathetical situation and too many color, then that would be not in the right direction. Otherwise, it's uh, very legitimate and it's very ethical. But depend how you build the story and how you write the story. Not everyone. Uh, okay, things sentimental. Someone said the world I'm so searching might be, but uh, we, how we build and write the story. That's extremely important. What kind of feedback we'll get, and um, it's extremely important to be ethical and to, to be aware about the possible consequences that not always might be good. So we have to preserve that. But when we write the story, we write the story because of uh, the people. We don't write the story because of us or because of some institution. And um, that's very important to be aware always. So um, people are the focus of the interest in the stories, not our opinion, let's say depend of different genres, depend of um, how it's uh, different approaches, but you have to be really very skillful and uh, professional to be on the right track about all this. Uh, what is as well very important is important to have structuring of the news, uh, how it should be. Of course, we always say, especially in the news, the most important thing we put first and uh, we link that yeah it sounds great in theory but it's not good in practice that's true it's uh, it's not very present in practice but now we are talking about theory you know so the headline and the lead should be linked especially when we are talking about news and um, a lead is giving the answer to the most important facts of those questions that we are mentioning uh, now and later, 5W and 1H. Um, so uh, why is it important to remember all this? Because of what I was talking previously. We choose what is the most important, what is, as you know, the last might happen, but the most important it is we are putting first, we are putting on the top, we are informing, about uh, that because that's the most interesting that's the most important news that that's happened today and as i said the headline is always going with the lead um, because it's very wrongly if you put headline that is uh, news attractive uh, done by by peace as it should be 
And then you didn't start with the lead, you put it somewhere down in a background. It can be lost, it can be cut, depend for which kind of media we are talking about. And it's, um, it's, it's not professional, it's not good. So headline, lead, the same big issue in, in them, and then you are building uh, the the other facts or quotes or whatever it's interesting and relevant for that news or for that story. You of course I, I hope you've heard about model on inverted pyramid and this uh, structure of the news this is specially structure for the news that we use. So as I said the last might happen but we announce the first we are putting the first that that's our lead, that's our the main story, that's the hook, let's say. Uh, leading para paragraph, the most important information. Typically, uh, we use about 30 words. I don't know if this one might be helpful for you, but that's as it is, that is in the first paragraph, in 30 words, we have to explain, you know, the shorter the better. Churchill said for three minutes, you have um, you you have to prepare three minute speech you have to prepare five days and five days speech you have to prepare be prepared with by three minutes so you need to be really precise short and to be able to to write um, uh, precisely and uh, as shorter the better and if you are going to speak for or making um, some broadcasting again, you know, depend on which, if you're in a news, the shorter the better. If you are making documentary about environmental problem, that's something completely different issue then. Um, this is important for you to remember that news that you would write for uh, as uh, homework uh, shouldn't exist uh, more than 300 words and uh, the entire story the storytelling that is your second homework which will be built up of on the on the news uh, shouldn't be longer than 900 words you have that in um, uh, where it's uh, you know the literature done uh, given and uh, all the information about this subject and um, recommendation how and how you have to work so but i think it might be good to put it here as well again uh, then we have so we have first you know the lead then the body of that inverted pyramid where in the body we put uh, argument story issue of controversy some information of evidence or sources you know that we have to have the better if it is two sources of <coughs> the news or in the story and then uh, we include uh, some details some um, photo if uh, it's interesting depend of what kind of media we are talking about the video um, dispute and etc we are going to expand the story mainly in the tail which is uh, down of that inverted pyramid we have any extra information the background includes uh, interesting or related information that are not the most interested one but they might provoke some uh, extra interest among some journalists who are dealing with that issue or that topic uh, or problem or so whatsoever and then they will uh, welcome that it will be very good for them to have that information and they can build another story from, or give us you know they will get some idea about it so it's useful if if you have some extra interesting or related information put in a tail down to the body uh, that, uh, as I said, some of the journalists might find uh, quite interesting or provocative, um, especially when they are writing storytellings or reportage, so different genre from news, a short item. Uh, what we usually use as a structure for storytelling is the model of fish or model of sand clock, so-called. I don't know if you are familiar with this one. 
But, you know, um, this is the narrative model and storytelling, the world is telling us that we have to be more colorful, that we have to, that we are not going to present only facts, we are going to, to um, this Uh, to involve the people who are telling the story and uh, we have to do that on a narrative way, on an easy way. Um, as we are talking, we have to write if it is about print press or uh, portals on etc. Uh, if it is for them, we are dealing with radio and television, we are dealing that on different way. But again, our questions will not be um, pure and um, Tell us something more about that. I don't like that question. Even some uh, some uh, literature recommended that, but I mean, tell us something. We have to have some information and to ask something that we discovered or think that might be interesting for again the audience. So this is narrative model model of fish. Uh, we start with some interesting uh, sign, some interesting angle. Then we develop the story and giving all the quotes, uh, sources, facts, etc. And we are finishing the story with the tail like is in the, you know, flapping in the sea or lake, uh, which means it's something that's supposed to be not brilliant, but uh, shiny, interesting, uh, to have some, some clue, to have some conclusion maybe, or some message that would be useful for the audience. So that's the model of uh, fish, narrative model of uh, creating stories, storytelling. And when we are talking about a model of sand clock, uh, then we have that kind of uh, so-called postponed action, which means we start with some valuable information. But then in the middle, we have the most interesting thing. And then again, we are like uh, developing the other part of the of the story and uh, ending in some comma voice, or we might repeat it what we said at the beginning as a message of that of that uh, story that we are creating at that moment. I don't know if this is quite clear for you. I hope so. Uh, you can ask me afterwards whatever is not clear or after you know during this week when you are doing your your homework uh, <clears throat> next we have how to write the news as we said short inverted pyramid choose one one um, interesting starting you have to to be aware that something must be most interesting or you can um, address metaphorically. You can quote someone if it's interesting or if it's important. We said if someone is who is uh, that, who is about, he is important, so we can quote uh, his words. Or, or with question. We are not sure about something, so we are posting the question and then we are developing and giving information about that. Um, do you follow the lead with the direct or or, not, or the nut graph? Uh, what this means? I wish I will show you. This is when we are talking about. It is about the news, the soft news, because there is different because hard news and soft news. But we have no time to go that deeply in that explanations. So I will um, follow. Uh, put the follow the next one. Uh, we are writing the story, then you'll see what that graph is uh, because I have some graphic input for you. So before you start uh, writing your story, you should have repeat reread your reporting. So to be aware, um, if you don't have in head, you you will sure have in notes or in your uh, phones or uh, tablets these days. Uh, what it is about, what is the most interesting stuff, what do you remember from what was talking of someone or somewhere? Because if we don't, what we remember? If someone asks you how it was there, what was told to the press, and if you don't remember nothing, if you have to read everything, then there is no news. You have to have something immediately in your head 
and then to recall, you know, what was extra said, what was um, uh, most important stuff. Of course, you 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 will note something. Uh, that we are doing this because we have to be aware how to distinguish what is the most important news that matters for the public, as we said, matters for the public, not for us. For us, it must might be quite interesting, but we have to ask ourselves, question ourselves. Is this as well interested for public audience? E, uh, then we have to. Uh, this is uh, how the writing the story, the uh, the image, writing a story. Sorry, what I've done. Uh huh. Uh huh. What is for the writing different from web and print? Vice print news. Uh, you know what is the difference is. Uh, the web is um, extremely is going to be it's very dynamic. It's going to to write something very fast. The print have more time and in print still when you put something in print on paper, it's forever. In a, a portal, they can change in blocks. They can change something is wrong. Everyone will call ah, oh, please change that. Please, they will, you know, the techniques will give you that opportunity to change that, to short it, to mark it, to whatever to done. But in print media, that is the document. This is something that is valuable everywhere in the, for the history, for the future, on court. It's here, it's signed, it's written. You have to be very careful what, we are, what you are writing. You have to be um, in the internet is, you see, um, if I'm doing like this, but then I cannot finish my presentation. Sorry, yeah. uh, we will discuss a bit. Um, I think uh, shortly I will finish and we, we will have um, possibility to discuss some things that are not, um, maybe I don't explain it in a good manner or you have something else to, to add or to ask from you experience that would be very valuable as well. So um, we are saying when we are doing the story sometimes like use like a nut, you know, like this. Uh, uh, it's a paragraph like a nut. It contains the camel essential, you know, stuff then stands for paragraph and then stands for story in a uh, sums it up, which means uh, do the I don't know. It was interesting for me when I've seen that they find this comparison. So I said, let's why not to put this um, picture, this image for you, because we have to follow the lead. You know, you, you don't do that to put the lead um, for one issue and then something, something to to write something completely different. You have to follow the lead always. And uh, under um, underlying the idea of a story. Of course, we have to repeat uh, during the story our essential message that we want to send to the audience. Uh, we are adding more and more details as the story is developing. Of course, we are not forgetting on that five W's and we, uh, we were talking about and one H. And uh, uh, at the end, as I said, if we use the structure of the fish, we are with some flashy quote. We, we can end with flashy quotation, quotation and um, on a shiny way to, to be like you have, you know, ta -da -da, you know, the end of this the story. But the message is going with echo. That's very important that the people in public will um, will listen about that and we talk about that and, and might help to some problem or situation or crisis to be solved. Uh, it's important to plan in, before you start to write your story telling or story whatsoever. You have to plan, you have to do some research, depend on the issue. Sometimes you have to do a lot of research and then to, to have a lot of facts that you are checking. Of course, you're not um, just uh, immediately on one source or one information on you know you you have to check the facts from different sources that's very important and then you create some kind of 
structure. You have to be aware to whom you address, what kind of audience, if you are younger, so to use the language that is more appropriate for them, if it's for some um, institutions that are um, dealing with science and you wanted to address some environmental issue in that regard, in that regard, you, you have to use maybe sometimes some more complicated language, although I always prefer the simplest, the best. I really prefer, uh, I think that it's, it's very difficult actually to, to talk on a simple way and tell, tell the valuable thing and people to understand you. So you, you uh, write your new story, start with the headline and lead, give all important, we said already, details and uh, facts, and we follow up all that facts, not different one, and then you will create a mess. So we facts you give up, uh, the facts, pardon, you gave at the beginning, you have to follow and to develop, not to change, that's for sure not, and uh, trying to make balance uh, if the different opinions and of course these days we always have democracy is famous because it has different opinions and we have to have all of them maybe not all of them but the most valuable one and the most important one we have to have in the story incorporate incorporate in the story maybe i'm talking a little bit faster but because we are not uh, we have not enough time for all this stuff it's interesting when sometimes we have to use uh, quotations of people, experts, officials. We need that, of course, especially if we are writing environmental stories. We have to have sources like that, so experts, officials. And um, it's good if it's too big the article to have subtitles, to have uh, headlines in the meantime, subtitles, as we said, subheadlines, pardon me, and some images. Of pictures, videos, or um, if it is multi-video, if it is for the portal, if it is only print and pictures, if it's for television, then some good visualization of what we are talking about. And um, again, be simple, as simple as possible. About the headlines, <laughs> this is quite tricky these days, because, you know, in the time when I was working as a journalist, uh, it was, uh, you have to say everything in the headline. That was good headline. These days, you haven't, you shouldn't say anything in the headline because no one will open to read. We have, you know, especially on the portals and etc. They will, if they read everything in the headline, then they will not read the article, they will not read the news, they will not read the reportage, whatever it is. So we have a lot of clickbait, I'm sure you know what it is. The portals are obsessed of clicks because that brings us um, followers and followers brings us money and advertising ads, etc. So um, how to be, <laughs> to avoid to be clickbait, not to say anything, to have a tricky headline that saying something but not everything. So it's quite difficult, I can say, but uh, but that's that's the way how it's the best to to do it. Um, should be short, of course. Should be attractive, of course. And it's preferable if they have um, a verb in the headline. If they are concrete, if they are not too much uh, uh, describing stuff. But then, as I said, we have to be careful not to tell everything in the headline, which once upon a time was the best. So uh, they should come out of information in the body of the text and present semi-new semi information. That's why I put semi-new information to have new information, but not entire information. Usually they are not putting in the past tense. It's important to be aware that um, uh, one about future event generally includes to meet, to decide when you are using that kind. They're usually 
giving answers or what is important or where or when something is happening titles usually or headlines sometimes they are answering on that questions because now we have no um, extra titles it's a different construct of the print media and not to talk about uh, portals it's completely different so but what is it for this all of them the same it's this last one that we are not using uh, a and the we are avoiding to to start with that that would be bad really and uh, it's not good to have that kind of articles in a headlines even you know sometimes for me question mark is discutable i've seen a, uh, there were quite i haven't read all of uh, what you sent but i've se seen all um, titles headlines about uh, what are you going to to write or your ideas ideas from what you've done this previous week uh, sometimes question mark it's um sometimes it's good but usually you know when you have question mark is doubt yourself as well is this valuable or not is this is am i on the right direction or i'm not especially for news Especially for news. For storytelling is different, but for news I would not recommend it because if you have question mark, then you are putting under question mark the facts that you're presenting in the news. And we have interviews as technique, uh, which was um, part of what we are supposed to, to talk about today. Uh, you probably know that interview is one of the most important, most present, most frequent uh, journalistic genre. We have uh, interview and we have hard talk, which is quite different, same direction, but different. Hard talk usually is present on BBC, but exists in many media as well. And uh, when you, we use as a technique, we say we have to be aware how to use, how to make interviews with the people we wanted to um, tell us the information that are valuable, information that are interesting, that are valid. So we have to be to to be aware or to have skills how to behave with them, how to present ourselves, how to can shake and look to the eyes if we are meeting in person because in that uh, we, in that way we are showing our attitude and personality we are not hiding something we are not nervous we are not lying if you are you know eyes are down and etc so we are direct we want you to hear we are act professionally we have to dress appropriately not as a, for the scene we are not going to be singer or acting there we have to be in a good manner and um, we have to be to ask questions what means to ask questions means to be well prepared um, when we are going to to either to interview someone as a technique or tomorrow as a journalistic genre always is best if you're good prepared if you know about the issue if you read a lot of what is happening recently so then you know what to ask and how to ask you have to be positive you have to be smiley but not too much of course because then in then you might be uh, like uh, underestimated like being serious or you know uh, and um, you have to be enthusiastic uh, they have to see that you're really interested in the matter that you really want to do something that is good for all and uh, in that way it's a better chances that you will get more information if you talk on telephone of course you again have to be polite you have to present yourself to present your medium i mean stuff that you already know it's not necessary that i have to told you but it's you know it's part of our culture and uh, way of behaving um, when we use interviews technique as well we um, 
we we have to make the first step um we have to to seek for the facts we must build a narrative that traps the, the facts in an emotional but not too emotional context because as i said previously it's not good to be that wouldn't be ethical if you're too emotional and you're trying to to catch up uh, on that level that would wouldn't be good and uh, something uh, um, some other relevant things that you 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 can ask that is related to the issue you are inquiring at the end one uh, short brief about digital storytelling if someone of you are using uh, digital um, media and are working or maybe they tomorrow they will use the digital media in marketing or whatsoever it's good um, how, how can you control emotions? You have to control emotions. I I was covering stories for refugees in in Greece, border here in Kosovo, Macedonia, border refugee stories. I I've seen. I was involved in a war scene, and um, sometimes it's difficult to 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 keep the emotions. But you you have to at that moment. You can. Um, give the emotions to flow up uh, when you come back to the hotel room where you are writing the stories or whatsoever. But on the ground, you have to be firm and you, you have to be... And somehow, if you are really deeply involved in professional stuff you are doing, you, you are not thinking uh, on that way emotionally. Sometimes you are, you know. When uh, I was uh, covering the stories for refugees, that were coming from Afghanistan, Syria mainly, and Pakistan. I spent three months on the border with Greece. I went on one day and rem I remained there. They sent me uh, suitcases with clothes from my home. Additionally, because I just went because I've heard that something is happening. And then when I've been on scene, AFP said, uh, please don't move from there. And I remained. And uh, there were really, really very emotional scenes and very um, touching and uh, terrible stuff I've seen. And then sometimes I was trying to, you know, how to help because you're seeing that people are walking without water, without with small children now. I'm like, you know, on their back and I wanted to bring to put them in my car, you know, to help them to, to pass quicker. And uh, <clears throat> one of the taxi driver told me uh, who was waiting for them, they were, you know, different ways how they are transferred. Don't do that. Immediately the police will stop you <coughs> and accuse you and put in prison even that you are smuggling refugees. Because someone will go and uh, the people who are smuggling refugees they are here around us and they will go and they will say that you are smuggling refugees because you are taking their job from that. And it's extremely dangerous. And then I asked one of the policemen because there were, you know, everything. All kinds of uh, people. And they said, don't dare to do that. You know? So you see the people, the father, the mother, they cannot uh, stay and hardly walk. So I can just give them what food, but uh, but it's it's really difficult to it, it's difficult to cope with emotions and to to remain the professional one. So just a few stuff for digital uh, storytelling that we have to develop the idea. We have to have plan as for the uh, every story. We have to have some script to outline to put what is most important, what is less important. Then of course we are choosing what kind of structure we are going to to do this fish or or um, scent um, clock and then uh, we are going to show to the uh, users perspective how the idea fits in their world which means including actions thoughts goals emotions relationship everything through video clips through um graphics through digital di different digital digital stuff that we have to these days on 
on um, on table. Uh, so film and record, finish, publish, share, and of course review or get feedback. And very important when you get feedback, if there's something is wrong and it's happening, then learn from that. Not the second time, the third time, the fifth time to to do the same mistake. That that would be bad, really. If you once we are people, we are alive, we are normal people, we are making mistakes. That's nothing um, tragical, but it's very important to learn from the mistakes we are doing in, in uh, during our job or during our life. So I will uh, finish now. I think maybe I talk too much, but there was a lot of stuff that we have to pass by together. We have some 20, 15 minutes. If you have some question to ask me, just Please do that. Darko will put you on mic. Darko, can you hear me? Or everyone disappeared? Yes, I am here and I can hear you. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone can join in with their mic and camera. And also you can click on the chat icon on the top of the Microsoft Teams application so you can see the whole chat. OK, OK, I will do that now. If I don't answer immediately, I can answer later. But if you have something to ask me, please do so. Uh, that should sound great in theory, but in practice it's difficult. Always is in practice to be to be not perfect, but to be professional, I will say. But it's worth to try, you know, it's we have to. That's our goal, that's our aim, that's our obligation, if you wish. We have to try to be as much as possible professional and uh, balanced and um, and uh, do our, jo our job as it should be done. Uh, how can you control your emotions? As I said, it's uh, difficult, but sometimes you're in the middle of the story and and that's it. You control it. I mean, it's a uh, fire all, all around you and uh, you are writing the story. Oh, what I've done. Just a sec. I was I was in a different kind of situations and uh, that's why my life was devoted to the journalism because I really like it. So I really try to. When I was doing to be journalist, to be journalist, but unfortunately I was 24 hour journalist all my life. Now, these last two years, I'm engaged only in uh, in lecturing and I like it very much as well. And it's much, much more calmer and uh, you have time for my, a little bit more normal life. Yes. Uh, limitations of for uh, this I don't see the whole it's um, uh -huh. Uh, if you don't provoke reactions, are you even writing about something important? When posing attitude, I think you misunderstood me. Okay, it's possible. You know, it's not always very convenient when we talk like this through chat. I'm talking, this um, doing ding ding, the concentrating, and so of course that we we can be uh, for a bit uh, misunderstanding each other. I hope it's. Uh, Okay, uh, and then what um, the word you are searching uh -huh, that I said, the comment one needs to uh, don't explain me. OK, I'm older generation. I might make some mistakes. But that's it, you know, I wouldn't agree. Journalist job uh, goal should ever to be provoke empathy. Journalist job to present the facts and situation of Yes, of course, it's um, no one is arguing that should be all the time to provoke empathy. We were talking when we use human stories is different because we have a lot of different stories. So not every story should to have um, human empathy. That would be absolutely mistake. I agree with you. You know, maybe me, we misunderstood in this um, talking, as I said, online. It happens that story provokes empathy. OK. Uh, what else would you like to ask something? Uh, I'm just I'm a, only dedicated to environmental problems or do they work as, for example, a war reporter? 
Children and Defense uh, Environmental Journalists, you know, depend very much because in the past there was, you know, war reporters, environmental journalists, law reporters, um, economic reporters, cultural reporters. We all were in different branches. Today is different. Today there is a lot of media, the lack of journalists, so they are doing one journalist can be both writing environmental stories and go to the war to uh, be re to be reporter from war or crisis situations. So it's uh, there is no no some rule that we we can follow these days. It's really very very changeable. I think that's all the questions. Uh, I mean, what were written during I was talking. Uh, uh, when you put that on internet, uh, it uh, Azra wrote. Uh, actually, when you put it on in the internet, it is there forever as well. Uh, it's not uh, necessarily. If you react, I've been in such situations, you know, they put something and it was wrong and um, I'll give them call and they lift it. Um, the technologies give us that opportunity, but in print that's really not possible. Yeah. Um, yes, to reach limitation of, of yes, true that some uh, some even some news agencies now they have very, very short news items, not more than 150 signs or, or characters or words. So it depends very much to whom you work, what they, the rules they have, how they're functioning and etc. We think that uh, when I said up to 300, I mean 300 is deadline, you might do less, but you, you shouldn't do more than that. 900 for the storytelling, for the homework, as well is the top you can do it 600 if it's interesting if you are able to pack everything in 600 words packed in 600 words not less than then for storytelling 900 is some average that uh, usually the news agencies are as most professional one who are not having comments but just facts and um, quotations they are using 900 words so 300 for the news a stop might be 150, might be 200. That depends on you. But just to have some idea, you know, how we, in which frame we are going to mingle. Uh, uh, you can submit uh, uh, regarding our assignment. Shall both news and the story be in one document or shall we submit two PDFs? I don't mind really, it's up to you, but it should be on the same topic. That's the point. And that would be easier for you because uh, you don't have much time to do on two different topics. So I don't pre don't mind how you will choose. That's OK for me. If you send it separately and first news, I will uh, estimate for uh, read first uh, them. If you are doing in a package, in one package, both documents, I will give the marks at the end when I will read both of them. For me, the same. I think that's it. Uh, do you have something else to add to ask or? Or we shall finish and it our class. Or how I can say for tonight. Thank you very much to all of you who are involved in this uh, whatever it was, lecturing or being together this night. And um, I hope that maybe some, maybe most of the things were already known for you, but I think that we give some other perspectives of angle or angle. And uh, so I wish you all the best and I'm waiting for your 
um, for your uh, homeworks uh, and we'll be in touch in any case. Thank you. Have a nice evening.